um, chance that it will be revealed by the news media. Enron was a complete surprise to the news media, to the business media. It was, it was developed by government investigation. And so uh, I think if you were to ask Tony Ritter, uh, the CEO of the Knight Ritter Corporation uh, that owns the Mercury News and the country across the time, uh, about this question, he would be very uncomfortable sending his reporters to try to penetrate what's happening in corporate boardrooms for fear that someone might do it to him. And so I think that there's a real double standard. There's enormous power being exercised by corporations, and there is very little scrutiny of them. You don't have public record laws that allow you to pry your way in the way you do with, with um, looking at investigating public boards um, and councils. But um, clearly this is an area where the media fall down. So this is an area where more and more power is being exercised, and we need to know the effect. So um, I'm not quite sure what the answer is, but we need to um, expose the problem, maybe shame the media um, into covering that kind of authority, which is certainly going to grow in the next four years. Yes. Yes, I'm interested in any of your reactions to the way tell you, I'm hearing about it a lot. Um, uh, so, I don't fully understand the situation. I think one, I think that the exit poll company uh, owes the American people a detailed explanation of how the poll was conducted and what the precise results were, uh, just to allay concern about the election, because uh, it bothers me that I can't find out what I need to, to answer people's questions about it. My understanding is that the early election poll were incorrect, they were leaked out, and the reason they were incorrect is that the uh, percentage of women who answered the polls was much higher than the percentage of female voters for whatever reason, and so that skewed the results because there was a gender gap in the, the election, and that, that was the discrepancy cleared up in the later poll. But I would like to know exactly how it was conducted and exactly what happened, and furthermore, uh, I don't have any particular suspicion of hanky panky in the election, but I would su support you know a fairly in-depth investigation of every election to cross-check everything we can, whether it's exit polls, um, different records inside the voting machines, um, at the results at the precincts with the results that are reported to the main computer system, etc. Because it will help the legitimacy of the election official and will uncover errors or fraud if they occur. Yes. No. We're actually going to a question. Oh, yeah. okay. uh, now I'd like to question. Most of you heard that uh, Donald Trump and the Crawford branch accountancy pushed the election. Uh, but did you know that the uh, chief programmer of the Donald Trump uh, had a uh, few felonies against him? And number two, a woman has written a book about uh, touch screen computer manufacturing and this guy was telling me against him, put something in the computer which makes it very easy and she said she had people that could figure it out in 20 minutes at the main train or whatever you call the whole lady equipment. In 20 minutes they could touch keys that would change thousands of votes. So if you wonder what happened to the votes. Uh, I'm trying to find that book. It was on Coast to Coast. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the woman is Beth Harris. She runs a website called blackboxvoting.org. She has a book called Black Box Voting, and uh, at least one edition of it is available free over the web. And uh, she, she also uncovers the story you mentioned about the uh, investor who had worked for the uh, as well as demonstrating with actually a chimpanzee where we can all gather around. I see the media as a huge kitchen table that stretches across the country that we all sit around and have the most important discussions of the day, war and peace, life and death. And anything less than that is a disservice to a democratic society. So we have to take it very seriously. And one thing we can do when people are doing it all over the country. 
In the same way people talk for KPSA and the Pacific Radio, media activists did that around public access. A uh, cable company comes into town, which gets a monopoly in that town. That's why only one, you know, whether it's Comcast or Cable Vision or Time Warner, the town doesn't want the roads ripped up more than once. So one cable company gets the monopoly in town. They have to give something back. And what they do is, because of media activism, <coughs> have to give back from public interest channels, public access TV channels. Um, if the community uses them, you'll see how valuable they can become. I mean, Democracy Now! being on these public access <coughs> TV channels has brought a lot of attention to these channels, and a lot of community members then want to have shows themselves. And then the community starts to tune in. And when the contract is renegotiated, um, if Time Warner gets what it wants, it will take that to the channel. But if there is a community that is watching them, they go to the city council meeting and they say, no, we're not going to take back our channels. This is the place where we can make our own media. And it's as in prime location as any other. I mean, in New York, we have channel 34. Channel 37 is CNN. I mean, we are right in the midst of that dial, and we can build our own infrastructure. So you call your public access TV channel in town, and you say, we want, for example, Democracy Now!, or I want to do my own show. Is Democ this is in the phone book, Well, we're here in Palo Alto. It's channel 28. Channel 26. And that's what you can call and that's what you can put on our website. You can go to democracynow.org and find out. But also media. We can put the public back in public television and in public radio. Yes, well, um, thank you again for coming out. Uh, I had a question um, that was more for Dr. Dutton, maybe, or for Andrew. It my greatest fear um, in the next four years the Bush administration is a preemptive attack on Iran. Uh, Iran is not another Iraq. There's so much funding investment from the Asian countries, European countries, and Russia. And I'm afraid that an attack preemptively by the U.S. or Israel will result in World War III. What is your opinion on how likely a preemptive attack on Iran will be? Well, <laughs> Uh, you know, I don't think it's going to result in uh, uh, a nuclear exchange uh, or an imminent world war, but I think it's going to be extremely ill-advised for a number of reasons. Uh, and then I'll answer the last part of your question. One reason is that there is a tremendous aspiration in Iran today for democracy and real disgust with the <coughs> political and religious oppression and the profound, pervasive corruption of this tiny ruling elite. I mean, here is a country, one of the few left in the world that's actually pro-American, and now we're thinking of bombing it? That's really brilliant. Um, I can't imagine anything that would rally popular support behind a decadent and failing regime in Tehran more readily than bombing any part of Iran uh, for whatever reason. Now, sometimes, you know, you've got to make choices in, in diplomacy and statecraft. But right now, when we've got diplomatic tools, uh, I think that would be a bad one. I think that the Bush administration knows this would be a big roll of the dice. Uh, and um, I think they've said to Germany, Britain, and France, the European Union contact group, let's see what we can get through diplomacy. But I would say there's a 50-50 chance that within the next 9 to 12 months, Israel or the United States is going to bomb Iran's nuclear facilities if we do not get uh, an agreement. And I do think it would be a very frightening step because uh, uh, it would lead to a, a tremendous uh, surge of instability throughout the region, a surge of support for the regime. Uh, and it might not get the facilities. They would withdraw from the nuclear non-proliferation treaty they would claim to have a reason now to develop nuclear weapons, uh, and I think we would be worse off. Something that you know gets buried in the inside of the news pages that I happened to know three or four weeks ago was a small story, I think, inside, buried in the New York Times, that we were in the process of transferring large numbers 
of bunker busting bombs to the, the Israeli Air Force. Now ask yourself, you know, these are the bombs that can penetrate the deeply embedded nuclear sites that Iran has. Uh, why we're making this transfer? If you're worried about it, uh, my advice is uh, begin to generate the kind of public debate now that and can anticipate this possibility and think about how the United States uh, and the international community can uh, find other ways to engage this issue. But I do want to say this is not a trivial problem. Iran is very far along in the development of a nuclear weapon, and I think this would be a very bad thing for the United States, for Israel, for the entire Middle East, and for the cause which is so vital of preventing further sure. Um When someone asked him who to vote for, he said, spend all of five minutes thinking about it. Um, but he said, go out and do it. Uh, but what is happening right now in the world is where you have to focus all of your energy. And the fact is, whether Kerry was elected or whether Bush was elected, um, they didn't take a complete, very different approach to Iraq. Mm -hmm. There is a growing anti-war movement in this country that had started well before the anti-war movement uh, happened around Vietnam, right? Even before the invasion, millions of people have mobilized. In fact, I would say it's most people in this country and at this point of globalization, it's all over the world. Um, this is a blip right here. What really matters is what you do. We're talking about people at the top. We're talking about a handful of so-called leaders. But you're the leaders, and you have proven what mass movements can do and how they can link up around the world. And this shouldn't in any way derail anything that you're doing, but actually fuel it further. I think very much people are on the right track in this country. We've never seen anything like the level of protest that we have in the past few years. All of this takes time, but it also takes absolute persistence and determination.